This year's smartphone market is basically down to a two-platform race. With BlackBerry gone the way of Android and Windows 10 Mobile pretty much nowhere to be found, it's an Android versus iOS showdown. Already this year, we've seen the launch of some fantastic Android hardware, including blazingly fast flagships, phones with all-day battery life, and even the rise of modular phones. That puts some big pressure on Apple to deliver with its new iPhones. For the past few months now, we've been tracking rumors of what to expect from this new hardware, and earlier this month we saw Apple finally make things official with the launch of the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. Do these models deliver on the big expectations, or does Apple maybe phone it in with an underwhelming upgrade? Well, you're about to find out as we take a close look at the smaller of the two new iPhones. I'm Stephen Shank with Phone Arena, and you're watching my review of the iPhone 7. Apple's approach with its latest hardware is one we've seen before, and while Apple's hardly the only company conducting its smartphone design in such a manner, it's arguably the company that's doing it the best. With the iPhone 7, Apple looks to bring shoppers a phone that's intimately familiar. As soon as they pick the handset up, they're going to know, this is my next iPhone. And yet at the same time as it gives loyal users more of what they've come to expect, the iPhone 7 doesn't shy away from going out in some new directions, including something that might be a little uncomfortable, all in the name of progress. It's that Apple attitude of knowing what its customers want before they know themselves. And while there's a potential for conflict there, this time it pretty much works. The iPhone 7 delivers a design that builds directly off what we saw with the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6s, returning with the same sort of sleek, rounded edge handset. And while it feels a heck of a lot like last year's model, Apple's tweaking its phone's construction in some important ways. Moving the iPhone's antenna stripes towards the edges of the back panel helps drastically clean up the phone's design, and some smart color matching, at least here on this black iPhone 7, really lets those lines vanish into the background. Speaking of colors, Apple's switching things up this year, ditching the familiar space gray and replacing it with a pair of new darker shades. The matte black you see here, and a shiny new jet black that's proving impossibly hard to come by. That scarcity is reinforced by Jet Black only being available on high storage capacity 128 and 256 gigabyte models. But even if we can't get our hands on Jet Black just yet, this new black color option is pretty darn attractive on its own. It makes a nice addition to existing silver, gold, and rose gold finishes. The iPhone 7's external dimensions are a near perfect match for the iPhone's success, but Apple's managed to shave a little bit off the phone's weight, with this new model coming in 5 grams lighter than last year's. Component layout is a close match to the iPhone's success, but not without a few adjustments here and there. Staying around back, the phone's camera bump gets a makeover, and instead of the raised element with its comparatively sharp edges of last year's phone, the iPhone 7 picks up a much more gradual, sloping protrusion, one that rises smoothly up from the handset's back. Around front, things look very familiar, but looks can be deceiving. That home button looks just like the Touch ID scanner we've gotten to know on recent iPhones, and while a glancing touch might lend credence to that analysis, a firmer press reveals the truth. Apple swapped out the physical, clicky home button of years past with an all-new, unmoving, solid-state button. That's right, no more clicks. Instead, the button uses 3D touch pressure sensitivity to analyze the differences between a tap and a proper press and respond accordingly. That includes using the phone's revamped Taptic Engine to give users an emulated, clicky response. It doesn't feel just like the old button, but use it for a few days and that difference quickly becomes inconsequential. One of the biggest upgrades to this year's iPhone is another you can't see at all, as Apple takes steps to protect the phone's hardware from dust and water ingress. That's right, we've finally got an iPhone with an official rating for water resistance. The phone's IP67 designation isn't quite as robust as the IP68 we see in models like Samsung's flagships, meaning the iPhone 7 can't go quite as deep underwater, but it's still a great start for Apple. Just be careful about not pushing things too far. If something does happen when you're getting your iPhone wet, Apple's not going to cover water damage under the phone's warranty. Buyer beware. Finally, there's one particularly glaring change that comes to the iPhone 7's exterior makeup, as the phone's bottom edge loses its analog headphone jack. The port's not been relocated either, it's gone for good. Instead, the phone ships with a new version of Apple's EarPods that attach via lightning connector, as well as a lightning to headphone jack adapter that allows you to continue using your existing analog headsets. Apple's not the first company to take such an action with one of its smartphones, but the iPhone 7 is easily the most high-profile device to attempt this move. Say what you will about the reasoning behind it, but it's bold, forward-thinking, and if there's any smartphone manufacturer that can convince its users to willingly and maybe even happily give up their stalwart headphone jacks, well, it's Apple. As we'd only hope, the new EarPods sound quite nice. If you like the existing analog version, you won't find any surprises here. But really, we're interested in what happens next. 
Will we see more and more headphone makers start delivering lightning-powered models, or will Apple's move instead drive new segments of users to the world of wireless headphones? And, and what's a minor footnote to the story of the vanishing headphone jack? The speaker grill you see Apple's place where the jack once lived is apparently for aesthetic purposes only. It doesn't actually emit any sound. While that grill might not, the other one on the bottom edge very much does, and this year it's joined by a secondary speaker in the phone's earpiece for Apple's first attempt at an iPhone with stereo speakers. The effect isn't perfect, largely because the two speakers don't have matching output, with the bottom edge component cranking out far more bass than the earpiece, but it's a nice addition all the same, and the combination of all that output makes the iPhone 7 easily the loudest iPhone we've ever tested. With the same exterior dimensions as the iPhone 6s, it shouldn't be a shock to learn that Apple's keeping the iPhone 7's display geometry unchanged, giving us another 4.7-inch LCD panel with a resolution of 750 by 1334 That's fine by us, though. At this size, it really doesn't need to be any higher res. Instead, the improvements Apple delivers are in terms of brightness and color gamut. Our tests support Apple's claims of a new max brightness of around 625 nits, helping with screen visibility in bright daylight. And support for a wider color gamut means that images should pick up new lifelike details. It's a little difficult to appreciate on its own, but it's a move in a positive direction for Apple all the same. The iPhone 7 arrives running iOS 10, with the same interface improvements and retooled apps we've already had the chance to check out when upgrading our older Apple hardware. Apple's added a bunch of new 3D touch interactions to its system, and we've got to say, this is starting to feel more and more legitimately useful, and less like the gimmick it had the risk of becoming. Messages gets a big overhaul with stickers, text, and emoji galore, and new versions of maps, photos, music, and news help keep Apple software looking and feeling fresh. Lift to wake support is a great way to check your notifications without needing to fully unlock your phone, and that's made all the more powerful by some useful lock screen widgets. There's a lot going on with iOS 10, but it all comes together to give us one of Apple's best executed system updates to date, packed with usability boosting new enhancements while not taking away any beloved functionality. All this software runs on Apple's new A10 Fusion chip, a new A-series processor, well that we're used to in a new iPhone, but this Fusion branding should clue you in that this year's upgrade is particularly snazzy. The quad-core chip is powerful when it needs to be, and able to sip at the phone's battery when it can in an effort to keep power consumption down. Benchmark testing backs up Apple's claim of speed boosts, and we can't deny the performance was smooth and relatively stutter-free all across the phone software. Apple pairs the A10 with 2 gigs of RAM, just like we got last year. And while RAM capacity isn't growing, though the 7 Plus is another story, we do get one welcome upgrade in terms of flash storage, as Apple drops its 16 gig base level in favor of 32 gigabytes for the iPhone 7. An extra $100 upgrades that to 128GB, and another 100 above that buys you the ticket to the 256 gig club. That's still on the pricey side, especially compared to microSD cards, but we're happy to at least see Apple acknowledging the demand for more and more local storage. Like we're used to, calls sound pretty good on the iPhone 7, both in regular and speakerphone modes. We had a few connectivity bumps here and there, but the biggest issues seem to be with carrier networks themselves, rather than any problem with the iPhone's hardware or software. LTE support gets a slight upgrade with support for new higher speed networks if your carrier happens to have the right tech installed. What about the camera? The iPhone 7 Plus gets all the headlines with its dual camera system, but the iPhone 7's single main camera enjoys some important upgrades of its own. We've got another 12 megapixel sensor here, but one with a wider f1.8 aperture that brings in more light than we got with the iPhone 6s. Apple also implements optical stabilization, previously a plus only feature. Between the two of those enhancements, it's easier than ever to snap some really sharp, well-exposed pics, even in less than ideal lighting situations. And if you do happen to need a little extra light, an upgraded quad LED flash is ready to help out. Just like the expanded color gamut of the iPhone 7's display, the phone's camera gets a similar upgrade to capture a wider field of colors. That same extra range comes to the phone's front facer as well, which also gets a resolution bump to 7 megapixels. That means the FaceTime HD camera now supports full 1080p video capture. Video recording doesn't get much in the way of specific upgrades, after all we already had 4K, but it does enjoy the benefits of these general camera improvements, including the shot-steadying performance of the camera's optical stabilization. Considering how nice pics and video looked in the iPhone 6s, we had high hopes for the iPhone 7's camera performance, and it really doesn't disappoint. The wider color gamut can be a little too subtle to appreciate in many conditions, but the stabilization is a really nice addition to the phone's hardware. In short, we're a big fan of Apple's upgrades here.
All this hardware needs to get its power from somewhere, and Apple blesses the iPhone 7 with a larger battery than last year, or even the year before, 1960 milliamp hours. Combined with power optimizing components like that A10 Fusion processor, that gives the iPhone 7 some impressive battery life, gaining well over an hour of screen on time compared to the iPhone 6s in our custom test battery. There's still room for improvement here, and we'd love to see Apple try something like wireless charging, but this progress towards all day battery life is still really great to see. Looking over the iPhone 7's feature set, it's almost like Apple stumbled across our secret wish list of most wanted iPhone upgrades. Waterproofing? Check. Optically stabilized, low light friendly camera? You got it. Longer than ever battery life? Not a problem. That's not to say that every move here is a win, and we're still smarting from the loss of the headphone jack, but you know what? We'll get over it. So much else here is done so well that even die-hard Android fans, this guy included, are likely to come away impressed by what Apple's managed to do here. The iPhone 7 isn't the flashiest iPhone ever, but what it lacks in crazy new tech it makes up for in really well done, thoughtfully executed upgrades. Apple's done so much well here that this easily comes across as one of the most desirable smartphones to land so far this year. I'm Steven Shank with Phone Arena. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming Apple coverage, including iPhone 7 Plus and Apple Watch Series 2 reviews coming soon.